want to make you smell like death unto death. Moses doesn't say to you, practice Torah for salvation. That's why you must learn Hebrew, because that's not what Hebrew says. Israel 알리아 리턴 센터의 파운더이자 또 디렉터이신 딘 바이 씨를 모시고 이야기를 나눠보도록 하겠습니다. Nice to meet you, Dean Bai. It's, yeah. it's an honor and a privilege to meet you with you, yeah. Brad. 이곳이 굉장히 아름다운 곳에 와서 보니까 요단강 물소리도 들리고 또이 뒤에 이렇게 아름다운 꽃들이 많이 피어 있는 요단강 저는 상상을 못 했는데 너무나 아름답습니다. 특히 지금 저희들이 와 있는 이 다리가 굉장히 역사적인 다리라고 얘기를 하셨어요. 이 다리가 어떤 곳인지 얘기를 좀해 주시죠. We're right now uh, over the Jordan River. Uh, the west side this way, the east side this way. Uh, it's an exciting time. We're on a bridge here that was built in 1949 after Israel was reestablished uh, in 1948, uh, back in the land again. On this side of the river, almost 3,300 years ago, Joshua first came over here. Mm -hmm. But I think you know the rest of the story. Ultimately, Israel was judged for its sin and it was scattered out to the nations. You and I are probably living in the most exciting hour since the resurrection of Jesus Christ because now Israel has been returning and been established from over 102 different nations, speaking 88 different languages and all learning one language again, the ancient language of Hebrew. And up here, we're starting the Aliyah Return Center Jordan River, where we're working together with the Jewish agency to help bring the Jewish people into the land again and absorb them, meaning helping them to live and have their lives. And we're dealing with, before they go into the army soldiers, lone soldiers that will come to the nations but have no family living here. We have young families that are coming here from the nations and uh, we're trying to help them settle in the land again. And some would ask why? Because the prophet said that a day would come 
where even the nations would be a part of the return and the restoration of Israel, and that's why we're here. Aliyah라고 그러면은 이제 전 세계에 있는 유대인들이 이스라엘을 돌아오는 것을 알리아라고 한다라는 것을 이미 알 사람들은 아는데 구체적으로 알리아 리턴 센터 어떤 일을 감당하는 것인지 좀 소개를 해 주시죠. For the last 25 years, I've been a, a, about helping the church understand God's heart for Israel and the Jewish people. We've done this in the nations. Uh, since 2003, we felt a leading and a direction to speak directly to the Jewish people and invite them to come and take hold of their heritage in the land of Israel. So here at the Elio Return Center, it's twofold. Number one, we're helping to serve the Jewish people. And number two, we're helping to reach the nations that would ultimately come up to the Galilee to see what Jesus was doing 2000 years ago, but actually to see what he's doing today. This is an exciting hour. And that the fact that we could do this with Christians and Jews together makes it that much more phenomenal. When we're talking about Aliyah, it begins in the nations where the Jewish people are returning from. So what we try to do is be, first of all, develop relationship and let them know that they have an opportunity to return to live in Israel again. And when they make the decision, then we try to get a church to sponsor that Jewish person or that family to make their aliyah. Once they return, then they have to learn the language, then they have to get a job, then they have to be able to, to know where to settle. And what is often taking place is they're called absorption centers. They come and they live a period of time where they learn the language, figure out what they're gonna do. And this is an absorption center for younger people. And this is what we're, we're supporting the Jewish people in this work, while at the same time teaching those from the nations how they can relate. As you might know, it's one thing for the Christian to learn that uh, we're connected to the Jewish people, even for myself. As a six-year-old, I, I wondered why, why Jesus was Jewish. Why wasn't he a Canadian? Maybe you wondered why he wasn't Korean. I, I couldn't understand why uh, Israel were the chosen people and it wasn't the Canadians. It took until I was 30 years old before I got a revelation that God has a plan for Israel and the Jewish people that will infect and touch the nations. It began with Jesus, but ultimately Jesus wasn't just so that I could have salvation, but it would give me purpose while I live on earth. And the scripture that changed my life forever was Romans 11, 11. Because of their transgression, salvation has come to the Gentiles, and it goes on to say, to make them jealous. Having a business background, I realized that it wasn't enough to be saved, but what is my purpose for however many years God gives me? And I began to realize that the purpose is prophetic and that there are prophetic scriptures that are for the Jewish people, but there are prophetic scriptures for the nations. Prophetic scriptures, Isaiah 49 says, to those who live on the coastlands, to those who, who, who live on islands. There are, there are scriptures that are for those who are far off, for those who are Gentiles. When I began to identify that there were prophetic scriptures for me to fulfill and for my nation and other nations to fulfill, I realized much of it had to do with the return and the restoration of Jewish people. Israel, but not only many Christians are also working to support this Aliyah and to support this Aliyah. I've heard a lot of things about this Aliyah. How much is it? In 2015, there was a gentleman that says, I have 10 white trucks that I want to donate to Israel to help the poor. But it came with a, a condition. You need to challenge Christians to give out of a love for God to bless Israel. So we started a campaign in Western Canada, and in 60 days, we did 100 meetings from west coast of Canada to east coast of Canada. And we were asking Christians to help support what God is doing here in Israel. And um, the most amazing thing happened. We watched Christians not only give money, but they began to give gold and silver. Now we asked for gold and silver, and we said, well, we thought maybe they would give us the broken necklace. Maybe they would give an earring that was missing its match. Maybe old boyfriend jewelry. 
but we were blown away. We were literally in awe of what happened. People began to give us their greatest treasure. It, the only way I could explain it, it was like Moses asking for the Israelites to give gold and silver to build the temple. People gave their heirlooms, their mothers, their parents that have since passed away, their wedding rings. And, and every night we were seeing all this gold and silver and people were taking it off their bodies. I can't tell you, Brad, how many people took their wedding rings off and began uh, putting in our hands. Uh, and, and I'm going, you know, does your husband agree with this? Does your wife agree with this? Next thing you know, they would come. It was like a phenomenon that's still happening today. And it happens night after night after night in 2015. And we were left with a challenge. We, we were just gonna melt this gold and silver down to, for money. But how can you take something that was more valuable than the gold and silver? It was the heart that gave it. It was treasure. So we didn't know what to do. We waited on the Lord for about three months. And we sensed the Lord was saying to us, melt the gold down, but turn them into new rings. So what we did is we made what's called restoration rings, and we put on it a passage of scripture out of Jeremiah 30, verse three, which says, I will restore all things to you. And last September, I brought a delegation of Canadians, almost 80 of us, 77, some Americans as well, and we came to Israel and we would go and I would take a Jewish person's hand and I would take the ring and I would put it on his finger. Many of them would, would then all of a sudden give me the hand where they have their wedding ring and they would put it on here. It was almost like God inside us was saying, I have a new covenant and I'm proposing. We, had, we saw it over and over again. In one meeting we did here, not too far from here in Tiberias, 100 Holocaust survivors came. We put a ring on every Holocaust survivor's finger, the tears that would come down. And, and we said, we know that these rings were taken off your fingers in, in Auschwitz, in Birkenau. And, and we're here to say, this is just a token of Canadians, many Canadians love, because in the end, I have to say, they tell me, that retail, we had over $2 million worth of gold and silver given. Uh, melt value is uh, a couple hundred thousand dollars if we were to do it. So what we did is we started a new campaign. We said for $500, we will take your gold. You can either give us gold and silver or you can give us $500 and we'll make this ring. We'll give them pictures and books and tell them why people did this and we'll put events on in Israel. So we've been starting to do this since last September. Uh, coming this June, it's the 50th anniversary, 50, of Jerusalem. So we're giving them to Holocaust survivors in Jerusalem. And uh, I've got events that I'm even working with Orthodox Jews because they can't believe it. Because they themselves are saying, we haven't seen this since Egypt. We haven't seen it since Babylon. That the Gentiles are again giving gold and silver as the Jewish people make their aliyah, as they make their exodus, as they return. Um, of course, we're using the funds that come from these things to help support projects such as this. Uh, here at uh, Beth Zera, uh, here at the LA Return Center uh, near the Jordan River. Yes, there is. Um, there was three organizations, CMJ Canada, Tikkun and Return Ministries. And when we came together, we were t told by one of our members of parliament, they says, did you know that in Auschwitz, in Birkenau, they had barracks that were called Canada, spelled K-A-N-A-D-A. -A -A. And because Canada was known during the war years as a land of prosperity, many people wanted to go there and live, they nicknamed the barracks Canada. And if you were a prisoner, a Jewish prisoner, that had to do with sorting the wealth, you were called a Canada commando. And so when the Jewish people came by train, to the selection point, and they would come off with their bags. The Canada commandos had scissors, and they would go through the lining of the coats, looking 
for the gold and the silver, the banknotes. They would take the shoes and they would look to see if in maybe the heels of the shoes, people hid their diamonds and their job was to find where was the Jewish people hiding their wealth. They came with trucks, it was amazing. They came with trucks to the selection point and at the selection point, it was there that they were able to take the bags, take the gold, take the silver, take it to, as I said, almost 30 barracks, sort it through, and they would use that wealth to be able to support the Third Reich. It would go back to Germany. Um, when we heard this, as Canadians, we were going, hey, this is using Canada in a wrong way. We're gonna change what we're gonna do. We will ask Canadians for gold and silver, but it's not gonna, we're not stealing it. We're asking for them to give it from a heart. And we would use that gold and silver to help establish uh, a, a presence for Canada in Israel. And what would we do with that presence of Canada in Israel, which we're doing right here, and we're gonna do in other places in this land. We would invite the nations to bring their gold and silver, and we will sort it out to be able to support what God is doing in this hour in the land of Israel as Christians from all nations. So we invite Korea, we invite the Asians <laughs> to be a part of bringing their gold and silver and to be a part of, of, of doing it, not because they're going to get a blessing, but out of a love for God to bless Israel. <laughs> Brad, thank you for asking this question. Number one, we would love Koreans to come here and volunteer. We need people who have IT skills, film skill, uh, uh, building skills, plumbing skills, speaking the language of, uh, of the Korean to the, to the people that would come from Asia because we're receiving the tour buses here and we want them to see with their own eyes that Christians have been called to do this and to be a part of it. But we need the people to work. You see all the buildings up there. It's a $10 million project. It could be even more than that. We need the people coming from all the world and we invite Korea. We invite uh, China and Japan and uh, Singapore and all the other Asian countries to come and to be a part of this. And, and we would receive them. We want the Korean flag. We want the Japanese flag. We want the flag of Taiwan. We want the flag of China uh, blowing in the wind and other Asian countries blowing in the wind because in Isaiah chapter 9, it says that in the future, it will be called the Galilee of the nations. So I showed you up there at that bus park. We want 70 flags representing 70 nations that say we're here supporting this with our volunteers coming to come and serve the Jewish people with, uh, without a condition, with love. The love of Christ coming through us. As well, utilizing our resources, our funds, we want to help support. It costs money to renovate. It costs money uh, for engineers and architects and all the things that you have to do to take a village and, uh, and rebuild it. Uh, uh, but as well, we want to invite the Asians to bring their gold and silver. We'll take that gold and silver. We'll not only melt it down and make rings, we'll make sure they're put on the, uh, the pioneers of the land, right here at Betzera. They came and settled this place in 1927. We want to tell them that we honor them, we bless them, and we're, we're grateful that we can now join and unite with them in this hour to take what was used for schools uh, for years and be able to turn this into a campus where we're not only helping their new immigrants come to this land, but we're teaching those from the nations to know what God is doing in the return and the restoration of his land and his people, all for his glory. We knew that we needed to come to the Galilee only because many Christians show up in Israel. They come, some want to be able to see where Jesus walked. Some they're going, I don't know why, but I feel a connection to this land. 
We know that when we bring them to this place, we have the privilege and the opportunity to be able to say to them that you have been raised for such a time as this. No different than Ruth, who was able to cleave to Israel and say, your God will be my God and your people my people. Different than Orpah, who kissed Israel goodbye. But it was Ruth who took Naomi back into the land of Israel. And it was Ruth that comforted Naomi. And it was Ruth that would meet the kinsman redeemer, Boaz, our Yeshua, our Jesus. And it would be that marriage that would come together. I believe in this hour that God is wanting to speak to Christians that come to the Galilee. Three and a half years ago, in 2013, we established the Alia Return Center in Tiberias. We said then it would be a beachhead. It was only 11 rooms, uh, but it was a place that we would give some of the Jewish people who made Aliyah a free vocation, vacation. You know, it was hard to make Aliyah. It's hard to learn the language. We would bring them up to the, a vacation place around the Lake of Galilee, close to the natural place of the Jordan River. I'm believing we are gonna see many nations, and it's happening. They're setting up prayer centers the Danes are here, Chinese are here. And what we're saying to them, this is not just for Canada. We're saying, we just simply wanna be here working with the other nations because we're called to unite East and the West. It's time that we work together. The body of Christ is not only made up of Jew and Gentile, but it's made up of 70 nations working with Israel. I don't know how it looks with Korea working with Canada, but I do know that the name of this place is called Bet Zera means the house of the seed. I would love to say to a Korean ministry, if you would like to come here and begin to start a prayer house or begin to start a movement for Alia where you can teach Koreans that, we'll give you a place. Let's talk about how we can work something out. Put your Korean flag up here. Bring your people of prayer down here. Bring some people who can talk to other Koreans because every day we have Koreans and Chinese and Japanese coming into Israel like never before. It's like a movement from the East is coming here right now. And yet they need to be educated and they need to understand not just the theology, but how do you eat with a Jew? How do you celebrate holidays with the Jews? If you're a, a Orthodox Jew and I'm from Korea or from Canada, who opens the bottle of wine when it's put on the table? There needs to be an education that's more than theological, but it's interaction. How do we relate to the Jewish people? Sadly, we've spent 2,000 years, whether it's been inquisitions or crusades or holocausts, hurting and killing the Jewish people. It's a new hour. It's time to say we need to work together for the purposes of plans of God so that all nations would know him. 그럼 지금 알리아 리턴 센터가 어, 전체적인지는 않지만 일부 구역은 이제 오픈이 된 상태죠. 이제 점점 점점 오픈되는 구역이 더 늘어나는 그런 상황입니까? Oh, absolutely. Uh, right now we have 21 lone soldiers up there from Canada and United States. They have no family that have made Alia, so they came by themselves and they're going to spend their first three years serving in the IDF. So on the weekends, they need family. We're their family. Over there, we in June we did one of the first uh, the first buildings for post uh, IDF soldiers. These are soldiers that have spent three years already in the army. Now they have to. Do I go to university? Do I get married? Uh, I feel depressed wow. because of what are the things we have right now up there? I think 30 to 40 of them on a six-month program. We're starting the volunteer building over there. That's where you're seeing the construction today because now we can live with them. Mm. We have Christians that are now coming from the nations. Right now, I think we have about six different nations up there that are actually serving as volunteers here. So we're working on helping them to have a place to sleep and a place to eat and a place to serve. But the most exciting is by August of this year, we have to get a building ready for a brand new Jewish agency project, 25 Arab Christians mm -hmm. and 25 Israeli Jews have to live together in one building for six months before they go and serve in the army. It's called pre-army. They're 17 and 18 year old Arabs 
and Jews. And I'm so excited that we get to work on this program together and help them. But I, so that's one. And then one other building I haven't showed you yet, it's the music room. The Jewish agency came to me and says, we have all these different groups here, posts, uh, army, lone soldiers, Christians, Arabs, Jews. Is there a place we can come together? And they asked, can you make us a music room? So one of the bunkers that was here for the school, we're turning it into a music room right now. And so of course we need to, uh, all the instruments, etc., so they can come together after their week and jam and play the piano and make music as unto the Lord. Wow, this is a very beautiful moment. You can hear it directly. The rest of the people who have been listening to this in Galilee, in Israel, there are many wonderful things happening. The Israeli and Arab Christians are coming to the same place in the same place. The same place is being built in the same place. You can also hear this place in the same place. 다른 이유로 문 닫지 않고 더욱더 확장되어서 이곳에서 울려 퍼지는 찬양 소리가 이 갈릴리 호수의 물소리처럼 요단강의 물소리처럼 어울려서 더욱 이스라엘 전국에 울려 퍼지는 그런 날이 오도록 여러분들이 함께 관심을 갖고 기도해 주셨으면 좋겠습니다. 그 일을 위해서 계속해서 우리 딘시도 일을 해 나가시리라 믿습니다. 오늘 이렇게 좋은 얘기 해주셔서 고맙습니다. Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming, and of the end of the age? That we are living in the end time right now. I'm not telling you the end time is coming. I'm telling you, you live in it right now. We are at the, the generation for which these prophecies were preserved. and more frequently now than ever. Well, the new world order is simply world government and it's forming right now. Furthermore, it's the world government prophesied in the Bible. World government obviously suggests that you've got a single capital somewhere and a single flag and presumably a single national anthem and the sovereignty of all other nations is subordinated to that name for this event called the abomination of desolation because Almighty God said he would place his name in Jerusalem and on the Temple Mount. Starting with verse number one. In verse number 11, Daniel, you don't have to guess because verse 24, and when we get to verse number nine of Daniel chapter 12, God answers his prayer. To all the wonderful people of Korea, I've heard wonderful things about your nation. I've heard that it's a place where spirituality can really prosper. I produced a DVD series called Understanding the End Time. It's 14 DVDs. It deals with the United States, Great Britain, Russia, Germany, and the countries of Europe in the Bible. It teaches which countries are gonna end up becoming a part of the one world government over which the Antichrist will rule. There's a prophecy in there about communism, capitalism, Islamism, Catholicism, wonderful prophecy that's so astounding. 
There's a prophecy about where the Antichrist will come from, where the false prophet will come from. All these things you need to know, and most of all, the prophecy about the second coming of Jesus Christ and how you can know for sure that we're living in the era of the second coming. So if you're out there and you've never seen Understand the End Time, I would just urge you, at least look at the first lesson. If after that you don't think it's credible, then don't worry about it. But I don't think that'll happen to you. I think once you see the first lesson, you're going to realize that the prophecies of the Bible are coming to pass right now. And all I can say to you, listen to it, pay attention to it, check your Bible, and I'm hoping to someday come to Korea so that I can speak to you face to face. Until then, watch the Understanding in Time series. God bless you.